Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking out my Hurricane STO to head over to Lamborghini Hatfield. It's new Lambo day. Believe it or not, I've now owned this car for two years. Time has flown by, but today we're heading over for the handover day of the first of a new model. A very special model in a very special year for Lamborghini. When I took delivery of this car, we didn't have any of the accents. I added some very bright yellow accents certainly a controversial taste. We then changed it to have the white accents that you see on the car now with the white wheels. There's something about this that is just so leery, it's hard to put it into words. Earlier this year, we loaded up the STO to head down to Italy to take part in the Grande Giro. Unfortunately, the event didn't take place, but it was going to be celebrating a very special year for Lambo. This year is their 60th anniversary. Being founded back in 1963 by Ferruccio Lamborghini, the company has now had six decades of history and to celebrate, they've introduced some very special versions of the Lamborghini Huracan. Completely coincidentally, new Lamborghini magazine rocks up. 60th anniversary. Always love these things. As customers of some of these brands, that's actually really nice, the Authentica, the very special one-off. Anyway, that's gonna need a clean. That's what my car used to look like before it had any accents. It was cool, don't get me wrong, but it's a Lambo. It's supposed to be wild. Back in 1963, the factory was founded. A year later, the Beatles introduced A Hard Day's Night, but we're gonna fast forward through Lamborghini's history all the way to 2023. What we're about to do then is head over with my car to the Lambo dealership to take a look at the new version of, I don't wanna to say too much, We'll check it out when we get there and start running through all of the 60th anniversary nods in this one of 60 special Raging Bull. We've got an unusual message, which I wasn't expecting. Brake degradation, which means that the brake pads are presumably wearing, but the car only has 8,000 miles on it, 8,088 miles on it, and it's only done in terms of track driving, like five laps of Donington Park and two, maybe three laps of the Nürburgring, but that's not very intense on brakes at all. So that's an odd one. That's definitely an odd one. I don't quite understand that, but good news is we're going to a Lambo dealer so we can ask them. The good news is that we've got a big tunnel in front of us. That means drop this car, I'm gonna move to the left here, down into Trofeo mode. That also means pull to the left lane for a second, pop the window down a touch and start to do this. This thing is nuts. like that. <laughs> you drive one of these and you become an instant hooligan. You just want to start doing this. Wait for it. <laughs> what a day. I didn't even notice, but the brake warning has gone. So I'm partly wondering if because it was in the field at Petrol Hedonism Live and we were driving in the rain, if some dirt has got in there and tripped the sensor, which would make more sense because brake pads will go eventually, but a lot of the miles in this car have been on the motorways, driving across Europe. It's been to Italy. Well, it went all the way to Italy once, to the factory. And then it's also been on that other adventure we did and we went to Munich and back because of the Italian part being canceled. And when you're sitting on the motorway, you don't, you don't get through brakes like that. Should last longer, should last a lot longer, especially a couple of track days easily for it to have gone in this time. So hopefully, fingers crossed that's all fine, because I know that parts for a Lambo are really expensive, so I don't want to have to change them if I don't need to. This has quickly become Supercar Alley. You have McLaren, Aston Martin. We've just gone past Porsche. Up ahead, I mean, you've also got Jaguar Land Rover here, but up ahead is where you then have the whole HRO in sight, which is, um, well, we're coming today just here to HRO and Lamborghini Hatfield, which is the sister dealership to HRO and Lamborghini Pangborn, from where I bought this car. And it feels like deja vu saying that, given Ferrari is right there where I just collected my 296 GTS. Anyway, I haven't actually been by car to the Lambo side of things, which is there on our left in 
inside the showroom. I guess the car is right inside somewhere, but um, I don't really know where you go. Maybe you're supposed to go the other way. I think I was supposed to go the other way. I mean, maybe we go say hello to Topaz while we're here. Otherwise, we're going to spin around and uh, we've just had a little bonus drive by the dealership. Oh, well. We've arrived. Can you hear me? Everyone at Lamborghini. That's what I'm supposed to do, right, when I drive this. I'm joking, but it is, it's funny when you drive this car, you can just become a complete hooligan. Um, we are going to go to customer parking, which is on this side, here, somewhere, and then head in. Yeah, this will do, this looks nice. For a second, I was like, we've parked in an electric charging bay with a car that's definitely not electric, although, Lamborghini have said that the future is electric. We've seen the introduction of Lanzador, which is the car that was launched at Quail. Um, and at some point very soon, Lambos will have fully electrified models or electrified models throughout the range, hybrids, and then fully electric models in not very long. This is a much better day for a new car collection day than the day I picked up my 296. I'm very jealous of that, but let's head inside and go say hello. Come on in then, the new Lamborghini Hatfield showroom past a blue Cephas with a Rancho California STO over here though, because the car that we have come to see today is lurking right over here. Pretty distinct shape when there's an STO in town with a wing like that underneath the cover. Now, we can't go into too many specifics before we're gonna have the full unveiling, but let me give you a sneak peek at what's under here. Look at that. Look at that two-tone. We're gonna to be seeing that in full in just a second. Before we do, let's have a whiz around the showroom because it's always fun to see what's about. This is Viola Pacife, the color, as I often tell you, that we modeled the paint Lila Perlamore for my Zenvo on, on the Hurricane Performante Spider. Then we have an Aventador SV Coupe, one of 600 of the coupes. They then made the 500 roadsters that followed. This, this is super special. This is the Ultime Roadster, one of 250 Ultime Roadsters. There are 350 coupes. Yeah, that is a, uh, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Over here, we've got probably a Nero Nemesis Hurricane Evo Coupe. We've got a Verde Citrea Hurricane STO. That's a bold spec. That's a really bold spec and a lovely Gallardo Spider. And I talk often about how one of these would be a super cool Schmimobile in the future. Something like this. This is an E-Gear. Obviously they were gated as well, but the five liter V10, pre-face lift. So you have the wraparound tail lights, instantly distinctive. That was when I started really getting into supercars when these were around 2005, six, seven, that period before the Hurricanes, obviously before the LP560s arrived. But we're here today to see this. So I guess once all the paperwork is done, it covers off on the 60th anniversary Hurricane STO. This is actually the first time that I've seen one of these as well. So we're gonna do this together, unveil the car and take a look around at all of the details from Ad Personum on the special 60th anniversary edition of the Lamborghini Hurricane STO. Only 60 in total of these in the world, only four for the UK market. This car is in Grigio Telesto, which is such a Lamborghini color. But wait until you dive into all of the details on the interior, on the exterior. We've got the upgrade magnesium wheels, center lock over the red calipers, give it a nice flash of color against the grayscale effectively of the exterior. But look at this design detail. This is the special graphic they've made for the 60th anniversary celebrations. And the way the paint flips between the Grigio Telesto and the Nero, we've got the pinstripe details as well, the bull's horns on the end. I love that attention to detail. As we come on by, we've also got the gloss black painted roof the exposed gloss carbon for various parts and again these pinstripe details all around back towards this ginormous rear wing and of course the source of the sound the 5.2 litre v10 640 horsepower you've heard it in the tunnel it sounds amazing this car just looks the absolute part now normally i'm a fan of very bright colors especially for lamborghinis but there's something about this such an iconic color now come and take a look inside as well where we have more of these red accents and details. Of course, new car, full prep. It's actually been to Topaz Detailing for full PPF. On the seat back, you've got that 60th anniversary graphic again with the red embroidery and the red inserts. We've also here got the valet key. We've got the uh, handover kits, the documents. We've got the charger as well, the trickle charger, different gifts and things down there. And I want to show you in the front of the car, there's actually something else I need to come and show you in there in just a second. But if I pop this open, 
on the inside where you have your very small storage area beneath the Kofango, this entire piece that pivots forwards. This is where you have things, if I carefully make sure that's in position, like the center lock nut, which you obviously need. If you don't have that and you get a puncture somewhere, you're not getting these wheels off. You need to make sure that's always in the car. You have this foam insert, which you could then take out should you wish. But actually the Kofango is an interesting one because you might remember when I had just taken delivery of my STO, initially, I actually did something very similar to the design that this has with the gloss black over the front. We did it with PPF and I decided to remove it because I have the satin exterior carbon and the gloss and satin was just too much of a contrast for me. But on here, when you tie in the Italian Tricolore flag and these extra pinstripes that it has around, it looks truly superb. It's a stunning looking thing. Now back to the interior for the extra thing I did not yet show you in here. If you notice underneath the screen in the central tunnel, there is a little storage compartment. They have added a very convenient and functional little tray to that area beneath so that you can put things there, which in my car, you can't. If you put something there in my car, it just flies out. So I need to see if I can somehow get that upgraded or installed, inserted. I'm not quite sure how exactly that works, but in total, only 60 of these. And in fact, you can see the plaque right here in the rear quarter window, 60 with the badge, 60th anniversario, one of 60, in total, in the world, 60 STOs, 60 of the Technicas, 60 of the Evos, and I guess four or so of each here in the UK market with two predefined configurations from Ad Personum for each of those. Really cool thing, part of a very cool collection of cars. In fact, as you can imagine, a car like this is going to a home that features some mega Lamborghinis. And today it's gonna to be taken away, transported away, ready to be enjoyed along with another STO in the collection as well, a very high spec example of the car, totally different to this one. And that's what's so fun, right? Creating specifications and something that really has a story to it. 60 years of the Lamborghini brand. Given we're spoiled to have not just one STO or even two, but three STOs here right now, I wanna talk wheels for a second. These are the wheels that I have. They're called the Heck wheels, uh, 20 inch wheel with the monolock the center lock, as you can see here, with that very orange anodized center lock. And then you can opt for a few different finishes and a choice of tires. So we've got the Potenza Sport here. You could also choose to have the Potenza Race tires, more of a semi-slick, should you go and drive more on the track. And the same can be said for these. So these are the Magnesio wheels, magnesium 20 inch wheels, obviously lighter. And again, you could choose to have these with either the sport tires or the race tires, but always with the monolock and always painted in the bronze finish. So a lighter weight wheel, cool name, magnesium, magnesio, and obviously beneficial for a track focused supercar like the STO, although not all that many people actually chose to spec these on their cars. I've never really been the biggest fan of the forged carbon fiber. I prefer the normal carbon fiber weave, but obviously viola passafe is a color I've always loved. Yes, it's passafe, not passafe. There's no R. Go and check on the Lamborghini configurator if you don't believe me. But the interior of this, look at that the black Alcantara with the matching Lamborghini crest embroideries, the stitching for the contrast around the seats, and even the leather inserts for the pinstripe across the dash and the knee rests on the central console and arm pad as well. That's a really nice interior spec. It goes perfectly with that performante Viola Pacifé exterior. It is time to take the car outside, which means a cold start. Technically, we've already had an STO cold start today, but let's have another. Awesome. Now this car obviously being brand new has the valves. We removed those on mine, but it sounds the part. So time for it to be pulled out. Look at that. Helps having a very, very good turning circle on the STO. They are just really usable cars. Really, really surprisingly usable, despite being obviously built for the racetrack very, very fast. But off it heads. Away it goes. Look at that thing. Ah, there we go, valve opened after the cold start. Obviously very popular. Urus, 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 Urus. And quite consistent color choices. Although that is a little bit wild with the lime green accents on the wheels and around the side. And at the front actually, kind of like this. Obviously the original Urus has now been superseded in some ways by the Urus S and the Urus Performante. Um, not sure what we have here exactly. Maybe all the regular cars, I think. But obviously, huge game changer for the brand and allowing dealerships and showrooms like this 
the new HRO and Lamborghini Hatfield to be opened up to offer these cars. And if you saw Lamborghini dealerships 10 years ago, it's amazing to think where this has gone. You know, a showroom that can take, I don't know, what is it, eight or so cars, nine, 10 cars maybe, even, if you have a look upstairs, they actually have a customer lounge up here as well, as part of the whole setup, with a bar area, and then all of the cars below. Really nice facility, also with Bentley, Ferrari, Maserati, and a load more other brands all just around the corner, part of it all. I can never resist a quick run to the Ad Personum studio where you can specify cars, because it's when you look at the different samples, like the leathers for the interior, that you start to get ideas for what you want to do next on a car. And this is a really dangerous game because it almost makes you want to just go and order something. I think in these, we have the paint samples. I mean, look at all of this. So Ecletica is where you have Viola Bast, which is what I have obviously on my STO, but there are some amazing colors. Viola Pacife, of course. I don't think we have a sample right here. Yes, we do. Viola SE30. That's one that I really considered for the STO, linked back to the 30th anniversary edition Diablo, color I've always, always loved. But then it's even when you start thinking, you know, that's Verde Citrea that we've seen out on the STO in the showroom. Choices, choices, choices. Verde Scandal is one that I wouldn't mind doing on a car at some point. That kind of color, that's super lime green. But you just start to get distracted. Even look at the number of different seat belts you can have. That's a dangerous game when you start to think about interior configurations and different specs you can go for and the things you can do. And yeah, imagine if I had done that on the interior of my STO, Viola Arene. That would have been, that would have been crazy. That would have been absolutely crazy. All the gizmos, all the gadgets, all the toys, wheel options, some ad personum paint options. That looks nice, that looks really nice actually. A nice white, white paint with some blue stripes is a good option. I need to stop this before I end up ordering another Lamborghini. Not a good plan right now. I've snuck around the back with this car in the sunshine, of course, lift system up. Regrigio Telesto being loaded into the transporter for the time being. Does sound nice, doesn't it? Well, we'll hear plenty more of that in a second when we hop into mine go ahead back towards base. The 60th on the way out with PBT, and we are gonna be on the way out with the bright Viola Bast STO. I tell you what, it definitely needs a clean. It's been raining again. This car is so cool. The colors, they're not me on paper. I'm the first to admit that. But every time I see this thing, I just look at it and I laugh. And at the end of the day, that's what a car like this should do. It should be something that just makes you smile. Um, gives you a proper experience. You get out of it thinking that was epic. I wish the tour in Italy had worked out as planned, but hopefully we'll have something to replace that before too long. For now, let's hop in, get this started, go drive again. While we're at it, MC20 is being parked over there because the HRO and Maserati showroom has its official opening. That's lunchtime. That's the uh, buzz and horns for lunch <laughs> here at Ferrari. Anyway, we're gonna head out. I can't believe we're actually doing this again, but we're driving from here around the corner to Topaz and it has popped up this message again, brake system degraded, which I've just booked it in for a service because it needs its second year service anyway. Um, I don't know if that is end of life on these brake pads at the front or something maybe, but uh, either way, <laughs> the camera phones come straight out. The Lamborghini effect. Back past the showroom. We'll get this figured out and go from there. Topaz is right here. That is how beautifully simple it is with a brand new car. And that's exactly why even that 60th STO has been to Topaz and got full paint protection film, as this does as well, and as every one of these kinds of cars. And to be honest, if you have any car you care about, should do also. This is where, back on the road, the revs, I just wish there's one thing, there's one thing I wish this car had, which is effectively the ability to have the sharper controls, but with softer suspension, like an ego mode, an individual mode, a customizable mode. There isn't. All you have is the toggle here on the steering wheel, which is cool, the anima selector, 
which you can go into STO mode and things are just a little bit calmer, up into Trofeo where it gets really obnoxious, crackly and loud, and you know, with a tunnel right in front of us, we don't have a choice, right? It's, it would be criminal if I didn't put down the window, slow it down a little bit, drop some gears. down a bit. <laughs> when you run into the red line, it sounds amazing, it's not a problem. What a hooligan machine. What an absolute hooligan machine, but a brilliant one. Back at the Schmuseum, we've got the cars in a funny lineup at the moment. We need to do some shuffling and some others that aren't here right now, but not necessarily the craziest of days. And I say that knowing that we have just been to collect a one of four limited edition Lamborghini, which actually is pretty crazy. And this is a crazy year for the brand. 60 years of Lambo, so much going on, a big part of wanting to continue the journeys and activities, adventures, events, and all sorts with my STO. And I just drive it through the tunnel and become a hooligan, become a little child because it's, I mean, look at it. How can you not? Anyway, a big thanks to my friend today. A big congratulations to him as well on the very special addition to his growing Lamborghini collection. It's super exciting and we might see some more in the future as well. Thanks also to the team at HRON, Lamborghini and Hatfield for their hospitality this morning to head over where this car will obviously go and get a service done to figure out what's up with the brakes as well. That's it for now though. Thank you very much for watching guys. I hope you've enjoyed the video and I'll see you again very soon. Cheers.